Welcome to the Get Wealth Podcast. My name's Brendan Wiersma. Please be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Slowly but steady, we're making our way up. We're around 50 subscribers now. I've been saying that in the last few episodes just to kind of keep a, a documentation of where we're at. Uh, super excited to do this podcast today. Um, one of my close friends here, Travis Lamb. And um, I, I think a lot of us have a lot to learn from what he's done and um, yeah, he's a home builder, works in construction. He's been doing pretty well for himself. I actually, the, I met you the first time from, when, you were a freshman, right? Yeah, I was a freshman, yep. Yeah, okay. So, and at that time, you were studying cybersecurity, a lot different yeah. than where you're at now. Oh, but definitely. you're an entrepreneur, you're a business owner, you are working hard, you're someone who has some, uh, for sure something to offer in the space of, you know, entrepreneurship and wealth building, that type of thing. And just from the time I've known you, it sounds like your mindset has already been geared in that type of way. Oh, yeah, so I'm definitely. super excited to get into this. Um, but yeah, why don't we just start off by talking a little, about, a little bit about yourself and kind of where you come from, that whole type of Yeah, I know my name is Travis Lamb. Uh, I've been born and raised in Prescott Valley, Arizona. Um, I come from a uh, family of builders. It's been three generations. Uh, my grandpa, my father, and then myself. And um, we've just, it's just started from nothing. And then we've came from something and we've learned a lot. And I've I've had great guidance in, from what I do. And I've seen the good and the bad. And um, you just learn from everything and everyone that, gives you something to offer, you know, so it just. I actually didn't know that. You, you, your grandpa and your dad were both builders? Yeah, they both were builders. Uh, it's been probably over 40 years worth of experience. So my grandpa built and he started building homes in like the, I would say, 70s. And then he started, he showed my dad he wasn't, so my grandpa, it was back when there wasn't as many, you know, like permits and everything like that. And then my dad kind of went through the hard times when they started cracking down and stuff. And when it comes to putting engineering and stuff like that and everything like that. So he kind of went through it all and he just kind of showed me and it's been, I've had great guidance through what I've been doing. So yeah, two to two generations. I mean. A a trial and error through that. Yeah, a lot uh, has changed in the years of building. And if you look at homes uh, that were built, you know, 20 or 30 years ago, it's totally different than what it's been now. So it's just, it's, it's crazy. And it's a little more of a headache, if I'm being honest. Yeah. With uh, the codes and the permits and everything like that and what they expect. But, you know, it's, it's all in... They have good intentions, but... Yeah, as far as like that nitty-gritty type of, you know, getting down to doing business type of stuff, I don't doubt that at all. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. Like, it's just like, there's homes that have been here for like, you know, 20 or 30 years, and it's like there's still no problems in standing like that, and they're, they're here, but like, it's been a little bit of a struggle. Yeah, I, well, one of the things I definitely want to get into that we were before the podcast, we were going over some questions type of thing, yeah. uh, which we, we, we can add into it, but uh, the market and press kit and kind of where that's going. That's another thing we can talk about. But first off, I really want to get into like who you are and kind of where you come from. Because when I met you, you were, a, was it cybersecurity? It was global, uh, yeah. Okay, global security. security. Okay, so I go to Embry Riddle. I'm a senior in the flight program. That's where I'm at. And I was a sophomore, junior, doesn't matter. But I met you because this man's a baller, first off. <laughs> That's kind of where the connection was made. Yeah. Uh, through intramurals, court. through just playing basketball and open gym. The guy, he, I mean, you guys can see him. He's a big guy. He's, you know, fairly athletic looking, but when I'm, when I'm telling you, right, a 360 windmill dunk, <laughs> I have a video, right? I'm going to play the video right now. You'll send me the video. We'll throw that in. Um, right. 
right. You, so you, you got some bounce, you're athletic, and uh, that that's how I met you is because I'm, I'm into basketball and – um, just, I, I don't know if you're on the other team or if you were, you were, okay. So you were kind of going through the, the hoops with Riddle as far as yeah. getting on the team there. And then I'm my best friend, Trace Edmire, shout out Trace Edmire. Uh, through that, I kind of met you yeah, and you were basically. studying sci or global, global security, global security yeah. which is a, a very cool major. I know oh, people yeah, who are doing some really cool stuff. Very interesting. I and mean, there's a bunch of cool stuff in it. What's, but. what's a job you get from going into global security? There, you know, there's a bunch of options you could do, but I looked at everyone myself and I was like, I just don't see myself in any of those, you know? Is yeah. it more like three letter, three letter agency type of deals? Yeah, definitely. That, okay. And I mean, that's, <laughs> that's like the, you know, the, something you aim for definitely the three letter agency, but, um, they own you pretty much. So, yeah. You know. And it, as far as what you can do, you kind of got to follow the path. I don't know anything about it because I've have very little experience. Actually, the basketball Trace Edmire, he's working for the NSA. Yeah, he uh, is. maybe I'll interview him one day. But um, as far as like the career path you can build, you're limited to who's looking for global security. Yeah, is definitely. That... Um, you can't you can't really talk about it that much, like at all. Yeah, especially going to school here. I mean, yeah. I've, I've I've talked to people who ask what they're doing, and they're like, oh, "I'd have to kill you if I told yeah, you." Yeah, exactly. It's it's that case. You know, you can't talk about it. Like, even to like, if you were married or had a fiance or a girlfriend or whatever, whatever situation you're in, like, you can't. Even to them, like, you're required legally like not to talk about it. You know, you come home and it's it's not really. The how is work because no, it's, it's like you know. I, how's it going? I'm, if, if you I can can't actually talk about tell, it. let's yeah. talk about something else. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. And and that so you were global security, and the first couple of years, I mean, it's probably the, a lot of the general ed credits, that, yeah, that definitely. type of thing. Um, and at what point did you realize that that's not kind of working out, or was it? I just couldn't. I couldn't see myself in uh, an office situation and. You know, something like that. There is jobs where you're not in the office all day and everything like that. But um, I don't know. I just kind of one day I just realized I was like, this isn't like what I want to do. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, did you have influence from people who were in the career field? Did you talk to people, that type of thing? One of my professors, that... yeah. He, um, I'm not going to say it is for, for security. Sure. Yeah, you know. Um, but um, he was a big influence, and he kind of just gave me like the blueprint of like what it was like and everything like that. And that just didn't sound appealing to me at all. Yeah, that's that's one of the. Uh, I mean, whether you want to say there's not very many good things about going to college, I, I, I think if you have a specific idea about what you want to do, for example, I'm a pilot. I know I want to be a pilot, and going to college is one of the prerequisites that I have to have to get to where I want to go. Oh yeah. But definitely. if if you're if you're someone who's you know, in this system of go to school, get into debt, get, you know, figure out what you want to do later as long as you go to college, that type of thing. There's a lot of people that, like yourself, who have um, kind of found themselves outside of that. Of that that's, yeah. you know, this picture perfect um, outline that yeah. society has laid out. And um, kind of what you've done yourself is figure out what's not right for you. A lot of people go to college and that's what they find out is that what they don't want to do. And a lot of times that happens to be switching majors yeah, four three, times. Yeah, exactly. Three or four times. Three or four that, times. That happens consistently. Like, yeah. And, and that's, crazy. that's not uncommon. And in yeah, that process, probably. maybe that costs however many thousands of dollars of debt that that is. Um, but, you know, you get to find maybe what you do want to do, or even in your case, you find something even better where what works better for you and is kind of just, you know, flows better. And I, I'm a hundred percent for someone who makes a decision in their career that, you know, leaving what they're going to college for to do something completely different. Um, I'm a hundred percent for that because that can, you know, the, some of the greatest people I've dropped out of college, what is it? Apple, Steve Jobs, like all those yeah. guys, you know, they go tripping on mushrooms or something or acid, <laughs> whatever it is. And they decide that they want to, you know, create the biggest companies in the world. So there's that's definitely, I know they do. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. And that, I mean, that's exactly what you did. So you, well, at what age did you decide to go a different route? 
Uh, I was pretty much like 19 years old. 19? Okay. Yeah. And you're, for the people watching right now, we're, we're, we're going to get into some stuff that's going to, it might make you feel a little bit in, in, insecure about what you're doing right now. <laughs> I won't, I won't lie. Uh, he's, he's doing some big stuff. So you were 19 when you decided to get into your own thing. And right now you're 20 years old. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm turning 21 this month actually, but, uh, it's been about two years when I decided, uh, to do my own thing and kind of stray away from the whole college scene. And it's been great so far, actually more than great. So yeah, man, it's like every time I talk to you. I just feel a little bit. I don't know what the what the emotion is. Like if I'm jealous or, <laughs> or what. But you, you start no, telling me about no. how things are going. It's like, oh, no. wow. I'm just, uh, man. I gotta. I got some work to do. Type of thing. <laughs> but uh, okay, no. so y- you were two years. That means you were a sophomore. Yeah. Okay. And you were you were kind of playing ball a little bit, and then you just yeah. decided uh, you're getting into this whole new world of construction, home building, that type of thing. Uh, so what? What was the biggest motivator to make that leap? Because a lot of people would probably stay in college being in this area of uncertainty, whether they're like, where else do they go? So how did you know that you wanted to get into this new thing? What motivated you to be where um, you are now? Well, my, my basically, um, I had grown up building houses, like here and there, like helping out a little bit here and there and stuff like that. And, you know, it kind of, definitely, it's like, it's like, you know, it's like, it kind of like, the more you do it, the more you love it, basically kind of thing, and I just, the more time I spent on the job site, I was like, wow, like, you fall in love with it more and more every day, so I just kind of realized, I'm like, this is what I'm going to do for a living, and I'm passionate about it, and what I'm doing as, like, in calls, I'm like, this just isn't it you know for me yeah and, I got um, you. it just you know my my grandpa did it my dad did it and then it was just like you know like i need to continue doing it kind of made sense it, it was... just it just totally makes sense and you know it's there's great money in it and you know you enjoy basically every time you're on the job site and when you give someone something that they're super excited about it's like you know it feels it feels good knowing that you did something good for someone. Yeah. So that was a big part of it, and that's been a big part of it ever since. Like my dad, like blueprinted that in me, and he like he basically he was like, you know, you're giving someone something that that you know they're gonna be in for you know a long period of time, and they're gonna be in it every day, and it's a big part of their life, and you know, so I just. It took me a little while to realize that, you know, like I was just like a young kid, but right. like the impact you, you, you were yeah. actually having on someone. Yeah. So it's like, if you, if you give someone like a quality built home and it's like, you know, that's where they're going to raise their family and everything like that. So it's just, it's big to me. And I kind of, it took me a little while to realize that, but well, that's that I, I haven't even thought about that part of it that, you know, when you're, you, you kind of do a project and you think of it, it is what it is. You're going to get this job done. But then mm-hmm. when you put that context of, you know, someone's going to raise their kids in yeah, this home, it's that's huge. a lot of gravity. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's massive. And it's just like, you know, it's like, it's very important, you know, like it's a, a roof over your head, you know, you kind of think, and it's like, you know, you want, you want to do the best you can for someone, you know? So it's just like, you want to be like, build them the best quality product that you can. And, you know, it's just memories, man. You know, it's like, they're going to, all their childhood memories are going to be there. That's you know? yeah. Crazy. So growing up in the home you did, was that a home build? Did, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, you have firsthand experience with where that comes from because, oh, you know, someone, um, I, was your dad that built a home? Or yeah. What? Okay. So, so my, that was instilled at that, a young age. <laughs> yeah, definitely. The house that I grew up in actually was a house that my father built. And um, it's just, when I look back on it, it's like, you know, he built that and it was a quality home. And, um, you know, it's just, you make a lot of memories on there. And um, it's just like you, you, you kind of, it takes you a little while to grasp like the effect of it. And you look back and you're like, holy crap. Like, yeah, like that shaped who I am today. Yeah. So when you were in college, 
were you already doing this type of stuff? Here and there, yeah. Like every weekend, pretty much. Like when it wasn't practice or school, I was, you know, like on the job, like helping whenever I could, you know. So like whatever free time I had, basically, I was on the job site, you know, just because, you know. Because it almost started as like a part-time job. Basically, yeah. And the more and more I went there and the more and more I fell in love with it and I was just like, holy crap, like this is what I want to do, you know? And it kind of just hit me. Like the more and more I did it, it it's just like, holy crap, like this is, you know, this is awesome and this is something I want to be a part of and I'm really interested in it and, you know, it's a very good, you know, profession. Yeah, it could be a a legitimate career choice for you Mm -hmm, in in that sense. What, What was the first sort of project that you felt like you were an integral part of probably my, my father's personal house yeah wait the one you not the one you grew up in no so um my parents got divorced when i was like nine ish or something like that yeah and um he kind of just he owned another house like and it was just like a little one though. It was just me and my sister and him. And that wasn't really one that I really looked back on just cause you know, but when we were building one, it was like, you know, like he was super excited about it and it was like pretty much his dream home. And it like, it's just crazy to see like, and you, if you look back on like the owners of like every house you sell to someone, like they're so excited from the start to the finish. Like they're just, they're ecstatic. Like all the time they come and they show up to the job site with a smile on their face and it's like, you you know you're you're giving them that you yeah know? and it's just it's awesome so it's just okay hold on I, I might have just missed that so your dad's first home build and that was the one of a separate project for somebody else mm-hmm. okay and then what age were you when you started doing that I was about fourteen years old you were fourteen on your yeah. first project yeah uh, so uh, was that you were more on the construction side of it you were just kind of your dad said all right screw these nails into this board or how did that Uh, go basically so i've so i've been running like the the nail gun side of it like where you build the walls and everything like that for a long time and you kind of learn and um i was just always that and then like it's just crazy to see something like you build it from the ground up you know at 14 you you were doing that yeah 14 i started learning everything like you know, you don't really take, like, I was just, like, kind of, like, oh, I'm just here for, you know, just some money, blah, blah, blah. And, <laughs> and it's shitty to think about that like that. But, um, and then next thing you know, like, you build it from the ground up and you see some, something come from nothing and you did that, you know. And it's just, like, holy crap. And then I, you know, I was 15 years old when we finished the house. Oh, no, I might have been 14, but... And then, you know, I'm living in that. It's crazy. And you, like, you look around and, like, you don't even notice. Like, holy shit. Like, I, oh, sorry for guessing, but, I, you know, I built this. Nah, it's free reign on the Get Well podcast. It's not, not <laughs> yeah. for kids. No. Yeah, uh, no, and it's just like. Cheers, by know, the way, to your water. Cheers to my water. <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, it's just crazy. So uh, w- w- when did money come into the picture for you? Was it at 14 when you were working for your dad? basically yeah how much were you was it minimum wage or were you just kind of getting a percentage type of thing or what was that go um it was minimum wage it's fair 14 just fair you Dude, know 14. when i was 14 i think i was um i was probably playing a little bit of xbox <laughs> i think i had some basketball going on uh i don't know what else probably just ex- the biggest thing on my mind was what my mom was making for dinner <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. You were building houses. So, yeah, like, no. You're getting paid for that. Yeah? That's true. Yeah, no. So the biggest thing my dad's ever, like, blueprinted on me and, like, implanted, like, he's, like, worth a work ethic, you know? Like, you got to work for what Dude, you Dude, that's have. so rare these days. How, how many people or like, kids our age or just grown adults do you see that just have such a low, like, work ethic drive to get things done? It's I. It's everywhere. The, the more and more, I'm realizing it's a commodity that's. Yeah. I don't know if it's overlooked, but people don't have that sort of like fire in their belly to just Literally, get shit done. The subs that I use, like they will like pay someone like very good money, and they're like, no one wants to work. Like my concrete guy, my drywall guy, my insulation guy, my air conditioning guy, like they're all like, no one wants to work. 
you know? That's so crazy. Because it's, it's nuts. Dude, work is something that everybody has control over. You have to. You know? like it's there's life, Sure, there's you know? McDonald's, whatever, like all these things that you can just do. You have this layout of what the minimum job is, and people can do that, and they yeah, get paid minimum definitely. wage. But work, like getting your your fingernails dirty, like yeah, just doing no, what no needs to be done. No to do it, dude. Which is so crazy because it, anybody can, like you're a perfect example. You're so young, and you can make a very good living just yeah. having some sort of ability to you know do things that are uncomfortable yeah so no, I, I, I i mean sorry to get off topic but like no, no the fact that that's a huge um privilege i mean that having parents that are that can you know put that in you at a young age yeah i know definitely like it's just like honestly growing up my dad like that's the only thing i really from a very young age like he was always working you know and that was a big thing for him. He's, he's, he was a workaholic. Well, what's your dad's name? Billy. Billy. Billy Lamb. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> um, all right, so minimum wage, what is that here? It's like 11 bucks an hour or something like that. 11 or 12, yeah. But back then when I was like 14, I think it was like 10 or something like that. Okay. You so know, and I was 14 just, years old, though, dude. dude. That's, I was playing – I was in middle school, dude. <laughs> or, I don't know, 14 to 15. <laughs> Yeah. whatever high school but no one's thinking about working so no that's that's something on itself. I'm honestly neither did i but he just he got me out there and that's what i did on my weekends my free time like even honestly like i played basketball my whole life and it just like right after practice like i would just go over there to whatever job site he was on and start working you know and it just you know it's worth work ethic is huge nowadays it just it separates the people from success and not success basically. yeah i mean that that's something i'm so grateful for and i'm realizing that every day now he, my dad he's set an example and that's such a uh, a, a paramount thing in mm-hmm. someone growing up because i would see my dad you know he, we would have all these animals right we as kids we'd we want to have all the animals the dogs the goats the horses Everything, and yeah. it's oh it's so fun to have the animals but then you know, we don't want to take care of them and do all that type of <laughs> stuff. So my dad is going out in the middle of the night and feeding the yeah, horses. And, no, and then he's crazy. getting home from work at 5 p.m. And just being able to see uh, someone who is disciplined and yeah. has work ethic and then instills that upon you at a young age when at the time you don't realize it's just kind of a hassle. Yeah, but then later like, you get older it. and you're like, wow, I have such a head start on people because exactly, I, I know, you know that doing things you don't want to do is – how you get ahead. Exactly. No, that's the biggest thing my like father has taught me and my grandpa too. It's like, you're young, you know, you got to do whatever you can do to get ahead. Yeah. You know? So it's just like, you just got, you got to set yourselves up for the future basically. And of course, man, I mean the future for you is like, what is it? The next, like people retire these days at around like 50, 60 years yeah, old. Yeah, 50, 60, yeah, basically. Yeah. How many years is that from you? Fucking, is that 40 years Forty years from now? <laughs> this is when most people retire from you? You're, basically, yeah. You're 20 years old? That's insane. All right, so you're 14 years old. You're making $10 an hour. You're, you know, you're, you're working hard. Um, and then you eventually get to college amongst playing sports and all that other stuff in between. Yep. Um, so when you decide, like, what, what decided – for you to go full board into this? Is it, you know, you decided that school wasn't an option, so then that just kind of changed your mind? Basically, it was just, you know, like, I was there, and it was just, like, I think there was one point, I think my freshman year, like, everyone was like, oh, let's go, blah, 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 do this or do that, and I was just like, if I'm being honest, like, I don't think I can afford that. You know, it was no BS, like, probably going out, and I think we were going somewhere, like, we are going to eat somewhere, and it was, like, not super fancy, but, like, just, like, mediocre, and I was, like, I don't think I can afford that right now, and I was, like, what am I doing, you yeah. know? Okay. It, and I was just, like... You're, like, I can't God. afford this cheeseburger? Yeah, basically, <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, what the hell? I'm like, screw, I'm like, screw this shit. Like, I'm, I'll go out there and, 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 you know, that's the biggest thing about, you know, working hard and coming from basically a blue collar, blue collar family. is just like, you got to put in the hours. 
like on like for the last two years, two and a half years, something like that. Like I've worked like sixty hours a week, you no know, BS, six days a week, like ten hour days, and sometimes seven days a week, and it's just like, it's nuts. Dude. And you're you're a business owner right now, yeah. Right, so, I mean, we're we're kind of teasing the listener right now, but uh, the what what we're getting to is you're a business owner and you build homes for people that, you know, you eventually sell, and mm-hmm. we're we're gonna get into all that, and so you know. If you haven't already, just hit that like button real quick. And Definitely. if you haven't subscribed, because YouTube analytics say that 80% of the people watching this aren't subscribed. My feelings aren't hurt, That's true. but it'll it'll be a lot better if you could just, you know, just stay up to date with what we're doing. Definitely. Um, so anyways, we're, we're going to get to where you're at now, but... Um, there's a lot in the in, in the in between part of it that mm-hmm. I'm I'm really curious about. I'm genuinely interested in because real estate. Okay, so if, if I wasn't gonna be a pilot, I would say this. I would get into real estate as like a real estate agent. I just think there's like it's so just, much room for opportunity there. There's a bunch of room for opportunity, and it's just crazy. And it's just like even if up even through the ups and downs, like property, like it only goes up. Doesn't matter over time, like over the, time, the, the value it's a of very property. Good investment, yeah, yeah, and, and that's any, any person in yeah. that business will tell you the same thing, really. You and know? there's so much to it, right? I'm talking about you know selling real estate, but you're building real estate, yep. Okay, so I'm, I want to get into all of that, but I want to work my way to where we are, and, <laughs> okay, and like you know, just so we're, we're in context here, you're 20 years old, so there's n- there's really not that much to work through, but it's yeah. important to know the details because where you're at now is where people spend a lot of time trying to get to. It's a lot of work. Yeah, it's a lot yeah. of work, but we'll get there. Okay, so you're 14 years old. You're working $10 an hour. You go to college. You realize, oh, I can't afford this cheeseburger. <laughs> it's time to get to work. Yeah, basically. Right. And, yeah. And, and your dad has, has already set the foundation for you. What does that foundation look like? Uh, quality product basically so he um he's very like precise when it comes to building like any kind of shortcut you can take he won't take it you know and that was something that was like imprinted on him for my grandpa and it's just like you want to build the best houses that you can and it's like in 20 or 30 years, people look back and they look at stuff. It's like, holy crap, like my house, like it's the same as when I built it, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's just crazy. And um, it's it's huge. Like if you look at like all the builders nowadays, like the big like corporation like Granville, Pronghorn, like Jasper Ridge, the new stuff that's coming up. Okay, like, hold on. Granville, the Pronghorn, are, are these like – Areas that are being developed. Yeah, yeah. Do people do, does one person build on that area, or what kind of? It takes a lot of money to do that like that. So, is, um, usually it takes like just for the land to buy, it's about fifteen million dollars. So, is that a person who invests in a portion of land? Um, usually it's about like at least three to five people. Like, so there's someone who has like the general idea of it, and they usually get like three to four more like investors just for like, let's say they're charging 10% interest, but they use their money to make money. It takes money to make, like make money in construction, you know? So Granville is huge. Like it's been huge for a while. It's blowing up from it's what blown I've up. like everywhere. Uh, like, w- w- so when I'm doing my research on the market right now in real estate, Granville is, you know, there's people in a hurry to live there. It's you're on a waiting list to buy a house. People there. buy a house and then they live in it a year later. Yeah, it's just it's just crazy, but honestly, if like if you look at their homes, it's just like that house that you're living in gets framed in like a week. Really? A week? Yep. No BS. It's a so week. I, I mean, there's a crew about ten guys. I don't want to say like my job is in comparison to yours, but I deliver groceries, right? Yeah. So I've seen the area of Prescott, Arizona. I deliver yeah. grocery to all these houses. And I'll, I'll go to Granville, and every time there's the neighbors or their houses being built, you're telling me that's a week long thing? It's, well, just for framing, basically. So, framing is like the most important part because it sells, it, it sets like the foundation for everything else that comes with like 
drywall, like electrical, like plumbing, like everything like that. And stucco and roofing and everything like that. And it just, it all comes in the like, but if you got like, like they put their houses together in a week and it's terrible. And if you go in there and look at it like, oh my gosh, when the home's done, it's like, oh, it looks great. It looks good. But if like, if you strip that down to just the frame, like stuff's twisted, there's gaps and everything. Like it's, it's oh. hacked up, dude. Okay. It's bad. Okay. So it's just like. So the developers of Granville, do you think that's how many people have invested into Granville? To Probably build? like five to ten, like millionaires. Yeah, five to ten millionaires mm-hmm. build, and you know people say that they can build on their property and yep. they get some sort of residual income. Yep. Okay. That was it's, really interesting. So the richest guys in construction are the guys that cut the corners. That, that's how it is. They, they cut the corners. They cut the corners. What do you like mean this, by that? So you're saying you're building like a subdivision like Granville, Pronghorn, like Jasper Ridge or Quailwood or anything like that. Like those houses out there, if you go and really look at them, like you can see like stuff like what the heck. Like if there's gaps like like in half an inch or anything like that, that, that that's not good. So is that one person? So for example, your dad. Yeah. You're, I mean, now you, but uh, someone who is – a, a home builder. Yeah. Do you go into somewhere like Granville and build a certain amount of homes or how many, like how, how is the quality of quail wood related to what you do? Is it a one home type of thing or is that an area? Basically like the bigger the project, like if you're going like 15 or 20 homes, the less the quality it is. Got it. So it's like those dudes like, <laughs> On our houses that we build personally, like it's like 16, 16 inches on center between each stud, like of wood. Yeah. Those dudes are 24, so two feet. They're oh, trying to okay. save as much money as they can, and they're going to sell for the same price as what you do, even if you build a better, like, quality home. It's because they know. Because the market, they're just the market's market. just crazy. It is you what know? it is. Yeah. It is what it is. And, like, they know they're going to sell them because people are coming in and buying them. And there's a wait list for them. So, they're like, they're going to cut every corner they can. Uh, okay. And it's sad because, you know, those are, like, the mainstream builders. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? And it's, like, a Jasper Ridge is, like, a new development, like, behind Granville. Like, that's yeah. going in. Like, those are $800,000 houses. eight hundred to a million dollar houses. Where is that? It's, like, behind Granville, like, towards Granite Mountain. Really? Yeah, eight hundred to a million dollar houses. How did you get there? Is that is that by the airport a little bit? Uh, no. So like you know, like on Glassford, when you're driving down that road and you see like the Granville. Yeah. So if you turn on, uh, what's that road called? It's like the road that goes to the high school and the one after that. If you turn on that road and you go back there and deep, that's Jasper Ridge. And it's like, those are like, it's like a separate development from Granville, but it's kind of like the same guy. And um, those are like the high end, like homes. Dude, because, okay, so for the people watching, maybe if you're a listener by now, you know that I just go and knock on mansion house doors. But up in that area, right, you're going down, um, whatever, you, uh, you said it was Jason, what, what was it? Jer- Jasper. Jasper. Jasper Ridge, yeah. So I, I've been in that general area by the yeah. by the high school you keep going pinnacle ridge have you heard of that it's like yeah. up on that mountain pinnacle builders yeah they're big dude those houses are crazy i, I went door knocking down there is that in the same ballpark it's the same thing those dudes are freaking multi-millionaires dude there's and some wild houses that's I've, the thing i've though. knocked on most of those doors <laughs> if you look at most of those doors like if you went to a house like when it's frame you'd see stuff that's like really hacked up and it's sad really like the like the highest like they're, they're charged like 800 to like a million dollars with that there's some multi-million dollar houses up on that hill P- pinnacle ridge and then there's yep. also yagashapa whatever yeah, it is yeah, exactly y- yagashapa you know what i'm talking about yeah there's a 3.5 million dollar house in there there's a couple million on each side of it i've I've knocked on all their doors. <laughs> they didn't answer. That's the thing. Though. That's why there's not an interview with them yet. But <laughs> if you go and you look at those people who buy those homes, they don't they don't know what they're getting. They're like, oh, it looks so good, but it's like they don't know what's on the inside of the houses. So what kind of houses do you guys build? How how do you guys go about doing this? Uh, okay, so actually, before we get into what you do, what yeah. did because 
my understanding is you worked for your dad for a certain amount of time. Yeah, about two years. Okay, so starting with what you did for your dad, how did you go about finding homes to build? Okay, so basically in the construction market, it's like you want to find the flattest lot, like no slope at all. Okay. Let the less money you like, because you can have a lot that's like that, but it's in a great area. Like if it's super slope, but you can have. Okay, hold on. So like that, meaning people that can't sloped. watch this, it's a it's like a downsloping. Yeah, downsloping land. lot, like downsloping piece of property, and it's like you're gonna spend twenty to thirty grand just to get before you can even start building the house, like in the slab or a wood floor or anything like that, and it's like. You're asking for problems because, you know, like it's sloping and it's only going to get worse. Like there's a lot of clay in the lot or in the foundation and it's just, you know, it, it's just, it only goes up from there. For sure. For sure. Okay. When, real quick, Harrison, can you check the video make sure it's still going? Wait, I mean, I'm not going to edit this out because the Get Well podcast, it is what it is, baby. It but is what it is. Is it still recording? Oh, uh, for sure, yeah. All right. All right, we're leaving that in. But, uh, oh, CJ is there too. I didn't even see him. He's laying down. <laughs> What's that? Harrison, you want to come in here and give us a couple of words of wisdom real quick on my give mic? Give us some freaking words of wisdom. I can't do that, man. <laughs> come on, man. Just a couple, just two sentences. Sure. Yeah, just you right here. It, it's, it's coming in. It's, we're leaving it in. What's the, like, the single most thing of advice <laughs> that you would give someone? The Way of the Superior Man by David Data. Check it, <laughs> check it out. Way of the Superior Man by David Data. All right. <laughs> oh, shit. You heard it first. Harrison rocked. All right. Sorry to side rail what you were talking about because we were we were getting into some good stuff. But um, so what you guys do mm-hmm. is what? Basically, it's like we don't cut corners. You know, we do everything right and how it's supposed to be. Okay. So uh, you, you were talking about... Uh, Jasper Ridge. Jasper Ridge, like those houses are eight hundred to a million dollar houses, and they might be some of the worst built houses you've ever seen. How, how do you guys decide where to build? Because that's the area where people go when luxury homes or in Prescott area. Where do you guys go? See, the problem is right now is people are flocking over from every kind of state and which what, and they're like, "Oh my god, it looks so good! Like I, I want to buy it. Like it's landscaped and there's sidewalks, blah blah blah, this that." And it's like. <sighs> You don't know what's on the inside of the house. You know, it's like, so just for example, like my mom's friend, she's buying a house in Jasper Ridge right now. Okay. Like, she's paying like $780,000 for a house. Like that's a that, pretty penny. <laughs> that's a pretty penny for sure. And the most basic thing in framing or construction and building a house, it's like, okay, you don't want any gaps anywhere. So, just, like, the easiest thing you can do is, like, on the top plate of, like, a wall. So, it's, like, you got a two-by-six wall, and it's, like, you want it to be, like, tight. Okay. Well, hold on. Just to break down. <laughs> two-by-six wall. Okay. Like, a two-by-six piece of wood. Okay. That was, that's what makes up an exterior wall. Okay. Okay. So, on the tops of those, like, on the top plate, you'll look. It's supposed to be tight like this. Like, there's not supposed to be, like, any gap at all. All right. There's, like, a half-inch gap. And that's just that's just sloppy, right? That's sloppy as it can be. Huh. Everything about that, like tying the walls together, like the biggest, like it's one of the biggest things in construction. And it's like you want to keep your house tight, and you know it's stable, and it's not going to go anywhere, and everything like that. But like literally, an eight hundred thousand dollar house, or like I'm sure they're even doing like million dollar homes there. Like there'll be a half inch gap on the top plate, and like they're doing single top plate, which isn't like good at all. Mm-hmm. Like, they'll be, like, the top, like, the just the header. Yeah. And then above that, where the trusses sit, so, like, where your roof, like, where it goes like this, like, at triangles or whatever. What those trusses are sitting on, which is a lot of weight, is a block about, like, six to eight inches. Okay. We don't do that. It's all, like, the same everywhere. Like, it's double top plate. Like, it's going to be weight, just, like, the weight will de- be distributed equally throughout the house got it okay yeah which is i imagine for longevity is a something it's huge. crucial right people it's probably crucial. pay more in the long run if they're living in a house based on of you know the foundation of a home There's they don't they don't do it now people just come in and they 
the problem is people are flocking here from every kind of state or whatever, and the house is already built, and they're like, oh, I'll take it. Like, it looks beautiful. But they don't know how it's been built or whatever. Like, there'll be, I don't know, five to ten different framing crews that'll go into these big subdivisions like Granville, Pronghorn, Jasper Ridge, or whatever, and it'll be like, oh, I'll take it. Like, it looks, it looks great. It looks like a beautiful home, but it's not built good. At all. That's crazy because most people are just going to give whatever their real estate tells them to, real estate agent recommends. Well, them. here's the problem with the real estate agent. It's just because in reality, the real estate agent, like the bigger the house, they're like, they know they're going to make some money. You know, they're making 8 to 10% on that, whatever the house sells for. Dude, knowing what you know now, are you tempted to get your real estate agent license? Because that's like 500 bucks. It's more than that. So basically, you make twenty grand extra, whatever you make, on top of like building a home and like being a general contractor. Like you make twenty grand extra. Okay. Yeah. So what I'm saying is like to get your real estate agent license mm-hmm. to take the test. But you know, to beat half yeah. the license, it yeah. costs like five hundred bucks. Yeah. But knowing what you know about the market and what the the build of the home is actually, you know, made of. Yeah. How. how are you have you considered becoming a real estate agent just for the fact of buying your own home and getting a commission off of it? Yeah, I have, but um, it just adds a lot more headache on it. Yeah, you know, it's yeah, for a sure. lot more stress. What is like a hundred hours of like online work to pass the test type of thing? There's so much paperwork. Okay, just to get to the test to get there, it's like I've seen it because my dad has his real estate license and it is a freaking hassle just to get there before you even start making money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, it's crazy how much they have to deal with and it's just like, but in reality, like the most realtors out there, they're going to say whatever they can to get you to buy that home. It doesn't matter if it's, it's the worst built home or the best built home, they're going to say whatever it is. They can. Whatever it takes to get well, the whatever it takes house to get you, yeah, house off the market to like to get a paycheck. It's just that's crazy. It's just kind of how it is. All right, so now let's now let's kind of go. Let's transition to how you have become a business owner, entrepreneur of your own home building business. It sounds like your dad has kind of shown you the ropes of what it takes, but now you're you're your own thing. You're 20 yeah. years old. You're making what? Like, what are you pulling right now? Uh, <laughs> the last two years, I've pulled about ninety four and above a year. If you're watching this, you're slacking. <laughs> that's what I'm saying right now. Maybe not, but that's it's a lot of work though. As a twenty year old, it's you, good for my age, but it doesn't matter what age you are. It's just. It's it comes with a lot of responsibility. All right, so everyone that's watching right now, they're either upset, they're mad, they're <laughs> you know they're taking it out on their kids. Do, do you want to know how how much it takes to get there though? Yeah, how much? So basically, if you want to be a general contractor in today's age, it's like you have to have four years of, four years of experience in one of the trades, like anything that it takes to be like when it comes to like drywall, framing, electrical concrete blah 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 any of the trades when it comes to building a house four years or 12 projects like 12 projects like for a small home it will take you about two months so it takes a while but but for like a big home like a 2,000 square foot and up it's going to take you four to five months easy to get the project done is what you're talking done. about done done and closed so you Got get it. the check all right so we're, we're backing up there's a lot of people that don't know how we even start to build a home right you're, yeah I mean, you know a lot for where you're at right now. A lot of people know nothing, absolutely zilch, all right? Yeah. So how did you transition to becoming your own business owner? I started out as a framer, you know? So you were framing, which is what you were talking about earlier Building about just homes. the nail gun guy. Yep. I was just the nail gun guy. I was like the grunt. I was Ten like bucks an kid. hour. Getting... Ten bucks an hour. <laughs> like I was fucking carrying around like the big ass, like the heavy weight, like... You're just the grunt of the crew, you know? Yeah. You work your way up, and you learn more as it goes, and it's just kind of how it like, goes. And um, and it takes a while, for sure. Um, but you just got to – you can't be, like, diligent. Like, you can't – like, you got to go into something, and you got to be like, 
okay, how do I do this? New, like, teach me how to do this. Like, For sure. you want to learn everything that you can, you know, but you you want to learn it the right way. Because if you're, if you're with a crew, like, that, that's, like, hacks. Like, you can ask any, any inspector, like, county or city or whatever or whatnot. They'll tell you who, like, the best, like, building crew is. And right now, it's probably mine. In the Prescott area, or is that Northern Arizona? What is that? Um, you can talk yourself up. Was it Arizona? <laughs> the best builder in Arizona, Travis Lamb. Definitely, like when it comes to like uh, small slash custom homes, probably for sure. But when it comes to like the build, the big build homes, like I'm sure there's a lot of great crews out there. But right now, it's just like. You go around and you look at the million dollar homes. It's like those dudes are hacking it up. Yeah, if you want to get your the most bang for your buck, in other words, and you're looking for just a an average home build, people the quality you get for the what you're paying for, you feel like is probably so, unparalleled. Yeah, no, unparalleled for sure. And it's like, so the more affordable you go, like when it comes to like, so basically now for a home in Arizona or anywhere, well, actually it depends on the market, but um. In Arizona right now, affordable is three hundred thousand dollars. And a, what what are we looking at? Three hundred thousand dollar home, a fifteen hundred square foot three bed two bath home. Okay, yep. okay. Is that that's kind of high? It's a little bit high for compared to what's a? I mean, I don't know many other markets. I'm just gonna throw a ballpark out there, Michigan or you know, <laughs> Kansas. Like what's it's a home different. in the middle it's of the country? For sure. But here, for sure, like, affordable is $300,000 for a three-bed, two-bath, like, 1,500 square bed. foot, like, nothing crazy, All right. you know? Yeah. Um, But if you go in, like, the big ranch homes, it's, like, you know, if you want a 2,000 square foot and up, it's, like, you're going to be paying, like, f- five to $600,000. Really? Which is a lot. My right? my impression of the Prescott area is that the money goes a long way. Would you say that's false? Is that more recent? What do you mean? All right. So when I when I first came to Prescott, Arizona, I would. What year was that? Uh, 2017, 2016. Mm-hmm. I would be looking on the you know the real estate websites, Zillow, that type of thing, and you look at the it nice was. homes, and it's like, oh, that's only that's only five hundred thousand yeah, dollars. No, it's gone. Way up since then. Is that because those, like, Prescott, Arizona? Yeah, everything. Prescott, Arizona, right now is in like the top 10% of the nation for right now for most desired places to live. Really? Yep. Because our air is the cleanest. Our air is the cleanest. We got sunshine 70% of the year. Like, it's just, it's golden, you know? Phoenix, you just, you can't go outside with that. Oh, you can't go outside in the summer, no way. It's like you want to go shoot hoops or throw a football or blah, blah, blah. Not if you're... Not in the summer. Nope. Uh, That's crazy. It's nuts, dude. So... All right. So, I want to get into the nitty gritty. Like, right? The the bare bones of what it takes to do what you do, right? So, when when you're looking at a a area or land or Mm -hmm. a property, how does it take to... First first of all, build upon that. Do you need some sort of investment? Do you need... Do you put the money down? How does that work? And how do you build a project? You know, I'm a 20-year-old. Like, you know, I don't have, like, crazy, like, three or 400 grand to put down all of it. Like, but when it comes to general contracting, it's like, if you pay for the lot, you can find investors. Got it. What, so, break that down for me. Private investors, it's like, they pay less. Like, you can use their money. You, you 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 buy the lot flat out like you own the lot. So what's a lot? What what do you mean a lot? Like a property. Okay, so how many? Okay, so you buy this area of land, and mm-hmm. how much is that usually up front? Right now it's about I don't know forty to eighty grand. All right, so you put down forty to eighty grand, right? Mm-hmm. That that's what you do. Yeah. And then where does the investor come in from there? The investor comes in as he pays for like the the cost to build the house. God, you pay ten percent on whatever it is. Oh, so if it's okay. like you, so let's say forty to eighty grand, whatever. But the cost to build the house, like it's going to be about two hundred plus. Got it. Okay, that makes a lot of sense to me now. I didn't know any of you, that. Yeah. So basically, he's going to give you draws, like you know, fifty grand here, seventy grand here, blah 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 for concrete or framing, electrical, drywall, like stucco, roofing, like 
floors or granite countertops or appliances, blah, blah, blah. Got it. And you're going to pay 10% on, you know, whatever that is. It doesn't matter if you're building a 1,200 square foot house or a 5,000 square foot house. You're going to pay 10% on whatever that is. You're going to pay 10% on whatever he's going to be putting into the, mm-hmm. the home. But either way, like basically now it's like I just I just built and sold a spec. Like it costed us like I don't know one ninety five to build. Wait, hold on. We dude, I have to take a piss so bad. You gotta take a piss. All right. Can I go? For yeah, break? go for it. No worries. Holy shit! It's still recording. I just had to make sure. Okay. All right. So we're gonna pick back up. Maybe this might be cut out. You might not hear this because. I'm a, I'm an editing guru and I put in what I want to, but so far we're on one cut and that video hasn't stopped, right? All right, so we're still going. Um, Where are we at? <sighs> uh, so I was just telling the people about uh, the process that you go through, right? You buy the lot, typically around forty grand or whatever it is. Forty to eighty, yeah. Forty to eighty, okay. <laughs> Doubles. <laughs> forty to eighty, and uh, and then you have some investor that comes into the picture and sponsors the build or you know decides that they want to build a home here because they eventually think that they're going to get yeah. some sort of profit so from basically it. they're going to get uh 10 percent, 10 to 12 percent on whatever the money they put up for got it so usually they're multi-millionaires like you know they're just fucking throwing money <laughs> and it's, right. it's crazy so it's like but after at the end of the day when you pay whatever the 10 or 12 or 15 percent it is it's like you're still making about 50 to 60 sometimes 70 grand a house that's that, for a small one that's what you take home yeah Woo! all right hold on we gotta back that up all right you you make 10 percent of whatever they put down no sorry they can't. make 10 percent of whatever they whatever. they make 10 percent of whatever they put down and where do you come into that so basically, so I just pulled this spec and Got it. It just closed uh, Friday. Got it. Yeah. You so, just closed the build Friday is what yeah. you're saying. So we had a hundred and ninety ninety two thousand in it, and we sold it for two sixty two. Congratulations, bro! You got anything in there? Nothing. I gotta get you some more water. You're not in a time crunch at all, right? No, not at all. All right, cool. All right, so. The investor, they put down the money and to I, build I, the house. Okay, they put down the money to build the house. And I, where, where I was wondering was, where do you come in? Where do you draw the profit from? And how does that work? And based on what you've put down, where do you, what do you see? You basically own the lot outright, and the investor puts in the money to build the house from like the ground up, like nothing but dirt, to the finished product. And you pay ten percent on whatever that is. 10 to 12 percent usually and usually what it comes out is uh, like I for example I just built a house for 194 we just sold it for 262 you you personally put in 194 or you plus the investor so I put I bought the lot and I have a private investor is what they call it and um, he put down the money to build the house got it and uh, I paid him the ten percent, which is what we have a deal on, and which is you know he made twenty grand off of just just these, investing, just investing. That's it. Yeah, the rest is all mine, and I made about sixty thousand dollars <laughs> off of uh, ten months worth of work and uh, two and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I do about three of those a year. So, but basically, so when I say 94, that's what I, I don't know if I should be saying this, but that's what I like show on my taxes. But whatever I make, usually I roll into the next one. You know, okay. saves on taxes. I got you. You don't need to say any more. I 100% yeah, yeah, yeah. understand. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yep. All right. That's, that's. Nice. Basically, okay, you, so you not, reinvest in yourself. So it, it's, you keep putting the money that you make into the business other than enough to, or more than enough to get yourself yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> comfortably. I got you, I got you. Yeah. Uh, okay. So it sounds like the key factor here is 
finding someone to invest. That sounds like the most challenging part. Uh, maybe not challenging on your end, but as far as someone from the outside looking in, that's the key piece that's holding someone back from well, doing this is having an investor. Yeah, that's a big thing. You can go to the bank, which is a little bit more money, but either way you're going to get it no matter what. Or you can go for someone that's... So a, a construction loan's about, I don't know, 15 to 20% right now. And it's 15%, like, 15 to 20% of what? What they put up for the cost to build the house. Okay, so what the construction is 15% of whatever the, the person cost who's investing is. Yeah. Okay. So, but... If you have a private investor, which is like, you know, they got money to just fucking throw out, basically. Yeah. And they're, they'll charge like 10%. So, like, one ninety four, it's like they made $19,000, $400 off of doing jack shit. Yeah. They threw their money in. And, like, you know, at the end of the day, you pay them, and they're like, they're happy, like, oh, shit. You know, 20 grand, like, no problem. <laughs> and it's like... Must be nice. <laughs> nice, man. Here you go. I'll take the 60. <laughs> and um, that's basically how it goes. And you just got to find the right people. And it doesn't matter either construction loan or private investor. You're still going to be making good money on any house. Okay, so what, what I want to know, because me wanting to do this someday, mm -hmm. being having absolutely zero knowledge in any of this, Right, like probably most people, unless that you are watching this and you do, then you can just turn it off and go subscribe to another YouTube channel. <laughs> but right, so I'm I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, okay, so you have, um, you know, have this business where you have an investor mm -hmm. and you put down a certain amount on a lot. What what would you just say to someone like me, who? is wanting to get started. How do you, what, what would your advice be of what are your first steps to take and how do you get to where you are at 20 years old, you know, making a hundred K a year <laughs> building houses for people. You gotta be the grunt. You gotta be the grunt. Years. Yep. So what is that like? What do you mean? Be the grunt. How do you, how do you be the grunt? You are, you start from the lowest of the low. Like you're making ten dollars an hour, you freaking frame houses. You just you're a nail guy. So would you say find someone who's already building houses and ask yep. to work for them? Yep, that's it. That's all you can do. And um, you basically start from the bottom and you you work your way up and you get basically. A, so I had two general contractors sign for me, and that's the way to do it. You can get away with one, no problem. But the problem is nowadays, it's just like one in four general contractors make it, like actually like succeed and everything like that. It's just because... What do you mean? How is it? Because that's, most people are going to fail then. Yeah. So explain one why they fail. So 25% are going to succeed, but the other, you know, the rest of them are not. And it's just like, you are... Basically, it's like the product that you produce, like your subs and the house, and it's like... What does sub mean? So let's <laughs> say you're, you're a framer, blah, blah, blah. All you do is frame. But other than that, you're a general contractor, like painter, like air conditioning, like plumbing, like concrete, okay. stucco, Got you. like roofing. You sub all that out. You're only as good as your subs. Got it. So if you have shitty subs who are hacks, then you're gonna get a product that's is shitty. only as good as they are. Yep, you're you're gonna go under, and it's just like it's been proven before. Like there's this guy, uh, I forgot what his name is, but um, he was huge from like 2000 to 2012. Like he was huge in Phoenix, and um, there was like this pool or whatever in the Diamondback Stadium or something like that, and his name was on there, and they took it off just because. Come to find out, you know, 10 or 15 years later, his work was hacked. You know, like he was an HVAC company. And if you look back on it, like, dude, his product was shitty. You know, it wasn't good at all. And it's like, it just shows one in four make it. And it's just like, you can be big for whatever and make good money, but then you could fall really hard. But if you consistently put out a product that is 
you know, a well-built home or blah, 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 this concrete, whatever, you'll make it. Okay. You know, and you'll do good. Like my concrete guy, like he, he's probably the best concrete guy I've ever seen in my life. Really? No one close to him. Wow. Like the best. And I've used him for, my grandpa used him, my dad used him, and I've used him. And he's just been the best consistently, and he stayed in business through the ups and the downs of construction. You know, like in 08, there was that crash. He still survived. Like he, he was making 60 and when the crash came, which that was pretty good in 08, you know, like $60,000. Like that's. In 08, yeah, no kidding. It it crashed, like it stopped, and he still right. survived. Yeah. And now he's making, I don't even know how much, but it's well over six figures. And um, it's just, if you want to be a general contractor in today's construction industry, it's like you have to be as good as your subs. So if you use the best painter, electrician, plumber, concrete guy, framing guy, like HVAC guy, like you're going to be successful. But if you use like hacks who cut corners, you you're gonna go under quick. I love that. Is the video still recording? Yeah. Hundred percent. All right. Um, that sounds like the most important thing that someone could take from this. You know, it's the same as any business. If you have a quality product and you're consistently putting out a quality product, you know you're gonna do good. Yeah. It doesn't matter where you're at, but if you're putting out something that cuts corners, there's a chance you can make it. There's a chance you couldn't. Yeah, but you're literally cutting out any chance of failure because you're putting yeah. in the highest quality you can. And if that doesn't hit, then fine. That wasn't going to work out anyways. Nope. It just, it's, it's just like you... Taking gotta, out all the guesswork. Yep. I love that. All right. Um, so I, I really want to put into concrete here someone looking from the outside in about how they can um like if if you were to give like a a 10 step pro five to 10 step process of someone starting from zero to doing what you are now yeah okay so basically it's like you gotta start from the bottom you gotta start from making minimum wage doing whatever and whatever trade you are and you gotta work your way up learn as much as you can and it's just like you got to get the most experience you can in whatever trade you're in. And it's like you got to test for your general contractor's license. And it's like you got to know, like, you're doing stuff right, the right way. And like I said, one in four make it. So if you, if you have someone that, like, it's been proven, like, they've been in it for a long time and they know what they're doing, like, you can't cut corners mm -hmm. in this industry. Like, if you do, like... You know, some builders have gotten away with it, like Granville, like all the big stuff like that. That's just good. That's basically because people come in, they buy homes, like, oh, it looks good, like, blah, blah, blah. Like, mm -hmm. it's, you know, got landscape, like, it's got sidewalks, like, it's a subdivision, like, I, I like it. Like, it's, yeah. you know, clean cut, like, blah, 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 but they don't know, like, at all right. what, what's built. They're just a regular person trying to buy a home. Sight unseen, regular person. Trying to buy a home, they have nothing. They have no idea what they're looking at. Yeah, you know. But you basically just have to start from the bottom and work your way up. Okay, so that's what it is. What, what about getting an investor? So when you work your way up, like in any in industry, you know, it doesn't matter what trade you're in, concrete, electrical, blah blah blah, whatever it is, you'll find investors. Really? There's yeah. In the construction business, there's always going to be investors. It doesn't matter if they're, you know, multimillionaires or, you know, they got about a hundred grand to play with, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's just, you'll find investors. Oh, okay. That's so, nice like, to me. Me, myself, like, I have an investor, like, like, they, they want me to put in, like, they want me to borrow, like, a million dollars, but I won't do that just because, you know, it's sketchy. Like, that's a million dollars. That's a milli right there. Yeah, yeah. a fucking milli. It's like, that's that's a lot of money. Yeah, that's scary. That's so, a scary amount of money. But if you do, like, just enough, like, three to $400,000, and you invest in that, and your interest a month, it'll be about, a, 
about as much as a mortgage, so like eighteen to two thousand dollars a month. But you'll be making way more than that. Based off of the product if you're building a home. Yeah. A quality home, yeah. Right. So if you look at like all the big subdivisions, like anything like that, like those dudes have borrowed like tens of millions of dollars. That's insane. Borrowing so, any money to me just sounds very scary. It's 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 a lot of stress, you know, and then like no BS, like I've been in a lot of stress and like I'm like, you know, like a small business owner, like but I do it pretty decent and um like I've borrowed like two hundred to three hundred thousand dollars consistently every month. Like I have to pay at that interest like ten percent, like twenty grand a month. And it's it's but, a lot. But I mean what you're making off of it. It's it's, it's worth it for it's sure. But like decision. here's here's what I can say, like if I'm being honest, like any if you want to be a business owner and if you want to be successful, it's like without any risk, there's not gonna be any reward. Yeah, I I love that. It takes money to make money. Mm-hmm. You know, any business owner will say that. All right. So as as far as what you've been uh, dabbling in so far, I've personally rode in your turbo diesel <laughs> truck, right? How have you spent your money? How? What kind of advice would you give to someone managing their money as a business owner as far as financing things? You've had some experience with debt. How, yeah. how have you personally been uh, managing that responsibility if i'm being honest you got to reinvest in yourself and in the business you know it's okay to take you know overall this amount of money and this amount of money for yourself and your hobbies and everything like that because it's like work can't consume your life mm. if work just consumes your life and that's all it is you'll never be happy but if you have hobbies and everything like, that, like i go to the sand dunes like i have a a truck a side by side a toy hauler like a dirt bike like that's what i spend my money on and you know i enjoy it a lot but it doesn't matter what your hobby is but if you just mainly invest your money back into the company you're going to be successful but if you just take money out of it and whatever you make you put back into like oh blah blah this like i have to have this like nice and nice this and that it's just like you're you're gambling for sure. Yeah. You know, and you, you got to reinvest in the company because then that, it'll only go up. You know, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what the economy is like. Ups and downs, it'll only go up. You know. Travis Lamb, thank you very much, baby. We did it. <laughs> we did it. Yes, sir. <laughs>